Hey, happy July. Uh, this is the uh, what I call our marketing assistance program from Parks Ag Solutions. And this video idea came from one of my marketing people. Um, he said, I want to know your opinion about everything. And uh, so we're not going to have my opinion about everything. Um, but I did like pay attention to what some of the hot topics and the grain markets were this past week, and I am going to give you my opinion on those. So starting off, um, get my notes here. We were uh, talking and still continue to talk today about Russia, Russia, Ukraine and, and the Black Sea deal and what is going on there. And that is morphing even as we are sitting here today on um, July 26th. So when it was just a situation that we were talking about taking Ukraine corn and wheat out of the world picture, which is about, you know, 20, you know, 10% of the world's production. It seemed to get absorbed relatively quickly. They were still able to move vessels out of some of their ports and then down their river systems. Now, what has changed dramatically in the last week is we are seeing an increase in bombings from Russia into Ukraine, not only on their export facilities, but their interior facilities along their river system. What makes this interesting is that the barges that are loaded on the river system and then work their way down and over ends up in Romania. Romania is a NATO country. So that makes, that brings on a whole nother situation that what if something would happen in Romania um, done by Russia? Could we see then it escalate even more? And it's already escalated over the last week. Um, but could we see that escalate even more? And then how that could really affect the markets is if Ukraine starts becoming more aggressive against Russian vessels. So not only could we have an issue with Ukraine grain coming out and hitting the world market, we could also have Russia grain having issues coming out and hitting the world market. And when you put both of those together, then you're starting to talk about 30% of the corn and wheat, especially for the world. That can make things very volatile. That can make things very exciting um, price-wise, just because we've not seen this type of situation since World War II hit food markets like, like this could. So um, my opinion is, it's going to continue to morph and it could continue to change the markets as as kind of crazy, crazy things happen. Dry weather. <laughs> we had a dry weather early, then we got some rain and now we're having dry weather again. And what I see and maybe it's just our area here, but what I'm seeing is uh, the plants themselves actually look pretty decent considering the lack of, of rain that they've had. And I think the technology, and, and maybe we're seeing more drought resistant uh, type of varieties being planted, but I'm very impressed with how the plants look. Now, with that being said, there's a lot of corn that just finished tasseling. There's a lot of corn just starting to tassel with this dryness isn't making grain. And that's what I don't know. And that's what I need to um, have answered in, in my own mind there is that is the dry weather um, really affecting bushels or not? Um, with that being said, another kind of popular topic has been the national yield, especially on corn. So do I believe the trade of 175? Not really. Um, again, I'm impressed with how the plants look. I'm not convinced yet as of today that they're actually making bushels. There's some parts that 
in the U.S. that are not too bad. I'm sure they are making bushels, but I don't think everybody everybody is. So as of right now, I don't believe the 175. I think it's a little bit lower than that. But also, too, I've seen 165. I, I don't believe that. Unless we go like another two weeks, if we get to the middle of August and this dry pattern continues, yeah, that, then maybe I believe the 165, but not as of today. Sales at 50%. Usually, um, as far as a marketing plan goes, we like to see 50% sold by the 4th of July. But I tell you, this year, the market since planning season started really hasn't given you a great opportunity to get there um, and profitable, right? To make sales that were profitable starting, say, you know, April 1st, uh, as far as planting season goes. So my opinion is this is kind is the year that you're probably behind that 50%. Um, if you're not sold yet, my opinion is this is the time to get started and use that stair step. If we continue to go up, great. Just continue to sell a little bit more as the market would go up. If it doesn't go up, then you've already started, you know, having some sales on the book at profitable levels. The Chinese economy has been talked about a lot here lately. I am surprised, and, and I am surprised, that their markets, their economy isn't rebounding as, faster, as fast after COVID as what was expected. So my opinion is that maybe the Chinese don't have as much money in their pocket as we thought they did. So maybe they don't have the security or have that extra income to be making those purchases like we thought they would. DP contracts. I uh, heard a little kind of talk the other day and uh, utilizing DP contracts. My opinion on DP contracts is they have to fit at the right time to give you maybe a little extra time to do some pricing. But usually there's pretty steep charges involved with DP. Um, usually it's a situation where the market is flat or if there is carry to the market, they, they have huge charges. So I am not a big fan of DP. I would rather look at doing something with a basis only contract, um, doing something with hedges, you know, something along those lines. Export sales, <laughs> and why are they so bad? You know, we know the South America crop was a good crop, right? So soybeans are flowing out of Brazil uh, still today on vessels. Their corn crop was good. So corn is moving out of Brazil on vessels. So what we're seeing is a reduction in what's being exported out of the United States. And so we've talked about the window of, of when bushels are available out of the United States and when they usually move. And I th just think we're this year we're gonna see that window get smaller because if a country or a company was gonna buy corner beans out of Brazil early, they can continue to buy a little bit later. And the same situation, if they maybe bought later, they might buy them sooner rather than later. So that window for our grain to be exported out of the United States is going to be smaller. I personally think uh, the USDA needs to drop their export sales on both corn and beans for the old crop and the new crop, which probably doesn't make somebody happy. <laughs> And we'll just, we'll just have to see how that turns out. But that is my opinion. Hey, thanks for watching. I know there's probably other topics uh, that we could have talked about. And if there's something you particularly want to talk about, I'd be happy to have a conversation with you. And my ending tagline, nobody's going to be mad if you sell grain at a profit. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll have one, I'll have a video in August for you guys.
Thanks. Bye.